Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a miniature lecture on congestive heart failure in the canine, particularly. And congestive heart failure, because of the lack of blood supply to the actual heart organ itself. Now, we have to remember that the great vessels of the heart, which plugs up in the human and gives us heart attacks, can be compromised. The animal dogs don't have heart attacks because they're not around for 50 years to plug up their their vessels. However, increased sympathetic tonus will decrease the actual lumen of the great vessels of the heart. So the heart, believe it or not, is starving for blood. And because of Starling's law, essentially, which is a physiological response to lack of oxygen to the tissue, it'll cause the heart muscle to do several things. It'll either dilatate or it'll actually hypertrophy. In other words, try to get stronger to make a more forceful, forceful pulse, or it actually will dilatate to actually include more blood, essentially, into the actual chambers of the heart and therefore actually pump more blood to try to do that. This is the body's change to try to architecturally change the heart to be more effective when actually the underlying problem is elevated sympathetic tonus in the thoracolumbar area. Here again, we blame virtually everything, a lot of the things that we see on treating the animals, not symptoms, but also treating the underlying cause along with the symptoms. As you can see in this uh, normal heart actually is enlarged significantly. All the vessels, all the auricles, and also all of the ventricles of the body are actually enlarged to try to pump more blood. There can be left-sided heart enlargement, right-sided heart enlargement, which is unique for the animal depending upon which of the valves are not closing down correctly. And we're getting like uh, a, a pumping of blood from the ventricles where the blood actually is pumped back upstream a little bit. So the animal takes two steps forward, one step back that kind of things. It will also produce a fluid accumulation up that backs up behind the heart uh, in the actual lung field. And we get pulmonary edema a lot of times. Animal congestive heart failure basically come in and they're coughing and wheezing, especially at night when their cardiac tries to slow down essentially. They accumulate fluid in their lungs and cough all night. And so we put them on Lasix, which is a raw diuretic that causes them to urinate extensively and get rid of excessive amounts of water and to quote unquote wring them out. Most of the animals that are presented with congestive heart failure are probably on a diuretic. They may be on a product also that will increase the strength of the heart contraction, essentially, and that medication may or may not be necessary if we utilize this approach. Our approach, of course, is to go through it on the well, vomtech.com website. We show you how we go about utilizing this particular approach. In Module 3 and also in Module 4 of the actual course, we show extensively how we go ahead and adjust the autonomic nervous system of the canine. Again, no other technology on the planet actually has a specific therapy for adjusting the autonomic nervous system of the canine except for the VOM technology. So we'll go ahead then, depending on whether the animal is on medications or not on medications, but they're presenting with whatever clinical sign that they have, and we'll go ahead and address that particular problem. We also never, never uh, uh, not go ahead then give the benefit of laser therapy. And what we'll do is we'll take the preset head at the thoracic inlet, and then we'll laser the animal's a pair of a spinal area and, and re-optimize that area. That frequency there is 216. We'll also, um, we'll also rehabilitate the uh, heart cardiovascular system with 133, 66, 4, and uh, 300, essentially. And then we also have some uh, other frequencies that we can use to actually treat the animal's cardiovascular system systemically. We will do this twice a day for three days, once a day for three days, and twice a week for two weeks. The treatment time for this laser actually is about 180 seconds. We charge really about 50 bucks every time we, we flip the laser on. So the client's going to be lasered about 13 times before we can get this animal significantly back into control. They may or may not be on medications, and then we can option for pulling the animal off of medication, especially medications that are not diuretics and will give less and less medication as we rehabilitate this. Because of Starling's Law, the heart will actually move back to a smaller uh, size, essentially, if we can uh, improve or rehabilitate the normal cardiac output through the great vessels of the heart. Now, most veterinarians are not even aware that this is even a possibility. What we do is we end up treating congestive heart failure as something that's just occurring and we can't reverse. We can, to some degree, reverse. However, I would remote, remote say this for congestive heart failure is that once we get the heart enlarged to a certain point, architecturally, it basically continually has this valve that leaks, essentially, and because of that, there's a point of no return. And so at that point, we use a combination of adjusting, laser, and also medications to keep this animal in a relatively normal state of being in congestive heart failure. So the medicines themselves can allow this uh, little poodle or a little uh, dog, for instance, that has congestive heart failure to live another five or six years as opposed to winding down in a year or six months. 
So thank you for listening to this con uh, this information on congestive heart failure. Remember, use the combination of, of VOM plus actually uh, the somatovisceral therapy and also the laser therapy to actually treat these animals successfully. And we may or may not use or uh, discontinue the use of, of oral medications to ameliorate the clinical symptomology. Um, uh, for more information, you can contact me at 888-935-4866. And also, you can go to the website, bombtech.com, where we can show you a lot more information about how it is that we treat these conditions successfully and have for the last 35 years. Thank you very much for your listening. I'm Dr. William Inman, and have a great day.